ladies and gentlemen. We're going to make a Sprite Smash app today. We're going to first go to MIT App Inventor, and if you start out in a project, which you probably will, the same menu will be here. You'll go to Projects and Start New Project. And if you're on the screen that I happen to be on, you'll just go to Start New Project. It's the same thing. So we'll give this a name uh, that makes sense, like Sprite Smash. Okay, and it'll take us to the app. So here we have it. Before we even get started, let's talk about some pseudocode. Pseudocode is language that sounds a lot like code, but doesn't actually include code. It's going to be a description of what we're trying to accomplish and how we're going to try to accomplish it. In this app, we're going to have an animated sprite move around the screen randomly. So a sprite is just any movable object on the screen, uh, so that makes sense. The player of the game is going to try to touch the sprite, and if they happen to actually touch the sprite, then they'll score a point or points, and we'll make a sound as well. Finally, we'll show the score on the screen. So that's our basic app. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to need is a canvas. So I'm going to put this canvas on the screen. I went to drawing and animation, and I chose canvas. We're going to want to set the canvas to be fill parent for height and for width. So there's our canvas. I absolutely recommend that you change the background color of your canvas uh, in some way. I'm going to leave mine, actually I'll, I'll make mine orange. <laughs> That's ugly. Um, change it in some way. You can make it an image. Uh, I'll show you how to make an image for that. You can make it a color or whatever, but you know, it's going to add interest. You can even do things to animate the background, which might be kind of neat. Another thing you're going to need though is a image sprite. So I'll drag that onto the screen. There's no image associated with our image sprite, so you can't really see it. It's real small, it's right here. But it's on the canvas. Finally, in order to move the sprite around, we're going to use time. So time is going to come from sensors on the left-hand side. It's going to be a clock. And the, the pseudocode for that is, by the way, the clock's down here. The pseudocode for that is, every time the clock ticks, we're going to move the sprite to a new random spot on the canvas. So right now, the time interval for our sprite is 1,000 milliseconds, which happens to be one second. We can change that number. We can even do things in code to make that number change over time so that their you know, ability to touch it decreases, and i.e., the game gets harder. We're also going to need some other things from the screen later on, but let's just go ahead and code this part now, and then we'll, we'll get to that later. So we're going to go to Blocks. So in order to get the sprite to move around on the screen, we're going to need the clock. So that's what this is. I'll put that on our screen. Our pseudocode for this is going to be every time the clock ticks, we're going to change the sprites X and Y coordinates on the canvas to be a random number. The random number is going to be also a math problem that's going to be related to the width of the canvas and the width of the sprite because we don't know what these numbers are. The, the canvas width is going to depend on the screen that you put it on. The sprite width, of course, is going to change depending on the sprite that you've drawn, which we haven't drawn yet. So we're going to go to image sprite 1 and we're going to scroll way down to set image sprite 1 x2. So notice I'm way down on this list and I'm going to drag that onto the screen. And now we're going to go to math and this is where we're going to get a random number from. So we're going to get random integer from 1 to 100 in this case. And we're going to set that from 1 and then we're going to delete well, I'll hold on to this. We'll probably need that number in a second. But we're going to set that to be uh, a subtraction problem, and I'll show you what I mean. So we'll go back to math, and I'm going to get blank minus blank. And, set. and we're going to take the canvas width and subtract the sprite width from it. So canvas width is going to be found under canvas 1. And I'm going to again scroll way down. Find canvas width, not set canvas width, just the canvas width one. And we're going to subtract the sprite width from that. So that'll be under image sprite 1. 
and again we're going to find image sprite one width. And I'm choosing width here because X is left and right. So now we can just duplicate this whole line of code and change it to Y. So I'm going to click here, I'm going to two finger click on a Chromebook or, or right click on a computer, on a regular computer, and choose duplicate. Okay. So now I'm going to change from X to Y, and Y is up and down, so it's going to be the canvas height and the image sprite height. So now, as long as that clock is ticking, it's going to randomly choose a spot on the canvas to put the sprite into. I'm just going to delete this. Unfortunately, we can't use GIFs on MIT App Inventor. They won't animate correctly. If we try to use a GIF, it'll just be a square with a yellow background. It won't animate, it won't change, it'll just be one image and it won't look right. If we want to animate it, we have to go to a site like Piscalapp, I'm sure there's lots of others as well, and make numerous similar drawings in a stop motion kind of way, and then animate them in MIT App Inventor. I'm going to do the Piscalapp animation in a separate video, so if you want to see that, I'll put a card up right here. At this point, I'm going to assume that you have your images ready, and you know how to upload them, you know how to make your animated drawings on a site like Piscalapp. If you don't, again, I'd, I'd like to encourage you to go to the video that's in the card here. I'll put it up there again. There it is. And otherwise, I'll see you back at the design screen on MIT App Inventor with uh, your pictures already uploaded. Okay, so we want to take a careful look at the name of our images. So mine are called sprite underscore and then zero and then a number that changes each time and then it's 10 so no leading zero so that's very important mine is like this yours is going to be different potentially if you have more images or less it's going to be a different n number I don't really understand why but sometimes it has a leading zero and sometimes it doesn't it's really confusing but we're gonna animate this now to be like a gif and in order to do that we're going to get another clock so we have a clock here this is for moving our sprite around the map I'm gonna rename that clock so it's now called clock one. I'm going to call it move sprite. Now I'm going to get another clock. Put that on the screen. So now this is clock one. And, and to avoid confusion in the code, I'm going to rename this as well. I'm going to call this animate sprite. And I'm going to set its animation speed to be pretty fast, maybe 200 milliseconds. I can't remember what's a good time to be honest. We're going to go with that. What's going to happen here with our pseudocode is every time this clock ticks, which is going to be really fast, five times a second, it's going to change the name of the image that it's showing for the sprite to be the next one in line up until it gets to 10 and it's going to go back to zero again. So let's go to the blocks view and we'll animate that now. One thing we're going to need to have is a variable and the variable is going to keep track of what the last one was. So I'm going to go to variables and choose initialize global name and I'm going to change the name to be animation number. All right. And I'm going to go to math and I'm going to get a zero and put that in there. So we're going to start out at zero. Now we're going to go to our animate sprite clock and I'm going to get when animate sprite timer do. So now what we want to do with this is we're going to look at what this number is. So obviously the first time it's going to be zero, but it's going to be constantly changing. So we're going to look to see if the number is less than 10. And we're going to do that by logic. So I went to control and I'm going to get an if then. And I'm going to see if this number is less than 10. Okay? If math and now I'm going to go to this blank equals blank and I'm going to go here if I point there I just pointed my mouse over there and eventually this pops up if that doesn't work for you you can also go to variables and just get a blank one and then change the name of it to be what you want by the way the the end of this the little clicky part has to go into the shape. That's how you get it to click in. 
If this number is less than 10, that matters because if it's less than 10, we have to add a zero in the front. If it's 10 or greater, we don't. So now we're going to actually just write the name of this sprite right here. We're going to do that in code. So we're going to create this sentence by going to text and we're going to find join. We're going to take this join and put it right there and then go to the little blue gear because we need three different sections. So when I click on that, it brings this up. I'm going to take one of these strings and I'm going to put it over there. Now I'm going to go back to text and I'm going to get a blank text box. And so I'm going to type this name exactly precisely the same as it is there. Sprite underscore zero. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to get this number. And finally, I'm going to take this one. I think I can use this. And I'm going to, oh no, I can't use this. I'm going to get rid of that. Back text. And this is going to be period lowercase p and g, just like my p and g's are. So that's if I'm less than 10. What if I'm greater than 10? So now I'm going to go to this gear, and I'm going to get an else, and I'm going to put that right there. Right click, or two finger click on a Chromebook, and choose duplicate on the green part. I'm going to put this right there. But this time, I'm going to delete the zero, just the zero off the front here. Because if it's 10, then it's not going to have that leading zero. So every time the clock ticks, it's going to set it to be whatever this is, which happens to be zero on the first round. If it's less than 10, which it is, it's going to set the name to be sprite underscore zero, zero dot png. So now I need to add one to this number every time this clock ticks. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to choose set global animation number two, like that. I could have also went to variables and chosen this set, the blank one. And now I'm going to go to math, blank plus blank, back up here, get, and I'm going to add one to it. So I'm going to go back to math and add one. I have one last thing I have to do because now I've added one. Once I get to 10, I'll be out of numbers. I'll be too high. So now I need to see if the number is greater than 10, and if it is, I need to turn it back into zero again. Back to control. If then. And now I'm going to I'm going to get something just like this. In fact, I'm going to duplicate this. So two finger clicked on the blue part, and I duplicated it. If this number is greater than 10, I like greater than instead of equal to because sometimes the code skips over it somehow and this seems to be less buggy. Then I'm going to go back up here and choose set. This is basically a reset for the animation. And I'm going to go here because I'm lazy and I'm going to set that to be zero. Zero. Alright, now I'm going to try this on a tablet and see how it works out. I'm going to go to connect and choose AI companion and I'm going to scan this with the AI Companion on my tablet. So on my tablet, I brought up the AI Companion app, and I scanned the QR code, and it looks like this. Okay, so at this point, you might notice that your sprite is too big or too small. If it's too big or too small, you want to change its height and its width to something else. You might change it from automatic to a certain number of pixels, you can make it, obviously a smaller number is going to make it physically smaller, a bigger number is going to make it larger. You may also change the animation speed by clicking on animate sprite and making that a different number. 200 seems pretty good. You can animate it faster by making it a smaller number. And you can move the sprite around the screen faster or slower by making this a larger or smaller number. So I really encourage you to play with changing those parameters specifically to change your sprite at this point. Now let's add the ability to keep score when you touch the sprite. So the pseudocode for this is when the player touches the sprite, we're going to play a sound 
and we're going to add to the score that will be shown on the screen. The sound is going to be under media, so I'm going to get the sound, drag that over. We're also going to have to add a source for the sound. People in my class are going to go to Twisted Wave. You can follow this video link up here to do it. Otherwise, you can make your own sounds someplace else or import your own sounds from wherever you might have them. We're also going to need a label that's in user interface. So, label. And I'm going to put my label right up at the top. I'm going to make my label text none. Alright, I think that's all we need. Let's go back to blocks. Back to our pseudocode, when we touch the sprite, we're going to add to the score. Touching the sprite is going to be sensed under sprite 1. Right here, the last brown one, when touched. And when the sprite's touched, we're going to want to play a sound. Call sound1.play. And now we also want to add to the score and change the label to match it. So the score is going to be held in a variable. So we're going to go to variables, initialize global, I'm going to name mine score. We'll start that at zero. And we'll add to the score. So this is going to be just like this right here. In fact, we can even copy this. So two finger click, duplicate. We're going to change the variable name to be score now. And we're going to choose what we add to it. So this can be as simple as 1. Or we can make it, you know, I don't know, 10,000, whatever you want. We can even do things where this number keeps increasing in some way. So every time you touch it, it's kind of exponential or something. That would be fun. Anyway, and finally we have to report this to the label. So we're going to set the label to be the score. So let's go to label 1, wherever that is. There it is. And I'm going to choose set label one text. And I could set label one text to be just this number if I wanted, but that's kind of lame. I want it to be a little fancier. So I'm going to go to text, choose join. And now I'm going to go back to text, get a blank text box, and say score colon. And I put a space in there. And I'll put that like that. And now the score will be nicely represented. Okay, so we don't have a sound to play though, and that's kind of a drag. So let's create some sounds real quick. So now it's been uploaded, and I'm going to go to sound one, change the source to be the sound, and choose OK. Alright, so now I can show you my app again. I'm going to go to connect. Oh, it's already connected still. That's the basic app. Um, if you wanted to create a reset button for that, it's really, really easy. If you think about it, resetting is going to need what? Let's think of the pseudocode for how you would reset the app. So the pseudocode is going to be when I press a button or some other input, maybe, I don't know, you could check to see what the score was or something. When I press a button, you're going to reset the score to be zero, right? So the label is going to be zero and the variable is going to be zero. And you put all that on the screen. You might do something else too. You could do other things like change the background color or whatever. You could also make this app more interesting by changing the background color over time or changing the sprite image over time. You could change the scoring or the sounds. You could make multiple levels. You could change the animation speed after a certain score or time. So there's lots of interesting things you can do to extend this and make it more interesting and better. So this would be the most basic possible.